Let's compare the two methods uh, side by side. Recall, this was my cross-correlation formulation. This is my convolution formulation. You will notice the big difference here. This one, the index i minus u, j minus v. Why here we are adding it, plus u and j plus v. Again, the same looping criteria that we looked at prior, which has basically been being able to loop over the whole uh, image uh, in both uh, the two dimensions. So the notice between the two formulations of cross-correlation and convolution, there is one difference here. There is a plus index here and a minus index here. What does that mean? This is what's our kernel. We've been playing around with this kernel all the time. Let's actually play around with it a little bit more to understand how and what are the differences between cross-correlation and uh, convolution. To help me, let's actually, I'm going to just give you a, an example of just a small 3x3. Three three. Again, notice if it's a 3x3, three three, the neighborhood is basically k is equal to 1. So now let's look at this formulation here. k is equal to 1. Remember, this one is an element that has indices 0 and 0 in two dimensions. k is equal to 1. The first element we will be basically doing is i minus uh, 1, so this is the index minus 1 by minus 1. And similarly, as I'm looping through it, you would notice that this would be 0, minus 1. Then, of course, um, this would be 1 and minus 1. Traversing through this way, this you pretty much know the answer for this one is 1 and 1. And this would be minus 1 and 1. So notice this is how we loop around. So in essence, when I did cross correlation, I started, got an A first, B first, C first, D first, E first, F first, and then G, H, and I. And that's how I actually did the um, looping and how I got the result. But now let's look at this example. Now my K is minus one, but minus minus becomes one. So basically the first element I pick up in convolution would be this one. Okay, and the second one I would pick up would be this one, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here in this case, for uh, this instance, I started with first, then traversing it this way, and traversing it this way. In case of convolution, I'm traversing it. In essence, by just changing the sign here, I've actually now given myself the ability to do the flip before I do anything. And that's an important part of what we want to actually do. And that was the difference by just changing this no sign here allows us to do. So in essence, that's how we are able to get this completely flipped kernel.